Today in the Barfly, we make a cocktail with one of the world's most controversial spirits. Can you guess what it is? My name is Leandro Demon Riva. This is the Educated Barfly. Are there any good cocktail uses for Malort, or is it mostly for jokes and dares? Hmm. Let's get into making the cocktail. I wanted to start with a with a Dr. Seuss quote. Dr. Seuss. Today's the day. You're off to great places. You're off and away, or whatever, from the places you'll go. Because today, today is a historic day here on Barfly. You know what today is? Today is the day that we use Malort in a cocktail. And I knew that there must be at least one widely known cocktail that contains Malort, and there does. Is. And there is. It's called the Hard Cell, which is a great name for anything containing Malort, and we're gonna do it today. You know, you're just supposed to pronounce his name Dr. Soyce. Dr. Soyce? Yeah. Yeah, but nobody does. I know. Let's do We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And. <laughs> what I was impressed with about this cocktail is that it's not a small amount of Malort. It is three quarters of an ounce of Malort. Oh, that's, that's a good amount. And there's another thing about this cocktail, and then it contains Saint Germain. So Saint Germain is elderflower liqueur. And when I was coming up as a bartender, everybody would call this bartender's ketchup. One guess as to why they called this bartender's ketchup, Marius. Use it on anything? You can use it on anything and it'll make it delicious. If you had a problematic cocktail that just wasn't balanced or it just wasn't, you know, it just needed a little something, add a little bit, half an ounce, three quarter ounce of Malort, and it will fix up your cocktail right, right quick. But unlike ketchup, because ketchup, like, chefs hate ketchup. You can't put ketchup on anything in there, like, they freak. Right. But, because, uh, but every diner wants to put ketchup on everything. One ounce of Saint Germain and one ounce of beef eater gin. The original called for beef eater, but I'm sure any London dry is gonna, gonna work, but I, I can't tell you that yet because I've never actually tasted this cocktail. Today, this is a first. And what I find so great about this drink is not only that it contains Malort, but that it contains both Malort and Saint Germain. So it has bartender's ketchup, and then it has arguably the United States' most controversial Amari, well, aperitif, what is it? Is it a, yeah, it's, I guess it's a, well, it's in a liqueur, but I, I guess it would be in the aperitif realm. And so the juxtaposition of these flavors is gonna be really interesting, but I have a feeling it's gonna be fantastic. All right, I'm hoping it's gonna be fantastic. Let's get our ice in the tin like so. Add our cocktail. Give it a nice shake. I don't know why I was just like, oh yeah. And uh, just, I'm excited for this drink. I really am. I was being stubborn little peel. I'm gonna do a little grapefruit zest on top. I'm gonna make this nice. Ugh. Why is it so hard to get you on it to stay on? There you go. Whoa, oh, hey. I will say that the grapefruit zest and Malort combination is pretty fantastic. And this is very bitter on the finish, but you do need like an ounce of that elderflower liqueur to really balance it. And it is really balanced. So it's really nice and tart up front. You get the botanicals of the gin, you get the elderflower liqueur, and then you get the Malort on the back end. And the thing about Malort that I think a lot of people find super challenging is that it's got an insanely long finish. So it's so bitter and then the bitterness just like expands on the back of your palate and it stays and it just continues to sort of grow and stay. And it's all wormwood. That's the main ingredient in Malort is, is, is wormwood. That's, it's a wormwood liqueur. And it just like, it's just like hangs out. And I think that's what most people find so challenging. But this drink is in, very balanced. It's very tart. It has a little bit of sweetness. You get the elderflower, you get the, 
the gin, but then you get that, that Malort on the back end. But what's nice is that all of those other elements on the front smooth the Malort out and it kind of builds and you still get that bitterness on the palate, but it's a lot easier to deal with for lack of a better term. Uh, this is fantastic. I can see why a lot of people like it. Uh, I get to taste it because it's confounding on the palate. It confuses me, but it is very good and I don't want to take away from that. And I feel like some of this language that I'm using is gonna turn some people off. It's definitely worth a mix and, and definitely worth a try if you've got the Malort. If you're in Chicago, then you have Malort or you have access to it anyway. Yeah, it's just like so tart. And then the sweetness balances out the tartness and then you get the Malort on the back end. And what's great is that once you've primed your palate with the Malort on subsequent sips, it's actually less of a punch of bitterness. All right, let's talk about the history before I put this guy down and end this video. Uh, it was created by a bartender named Brad Bolt of Bar DeVille in Chicago, Illinois. That's what I got for you on it. I can see why this is considered by Robert Simonson a modern classic like apparently this is made the rounds on enough menus that it's considered a modern classic and i can see why it's really really good it's a masterful mixing just i don't know if malort is very widely available anywhere else though so this might be kind of a limited thing for you guys but if you guys can get your hands on it or if you just want to get like uh i mean this could work with other very bitter aperitif liqueur so if you want to try that if you're in europe gommel dansk mm -hmm could use that as a substitute. That is like Malort on steroids though, so be careful. You might have to do a little work to balance that. I'm just rambling now, so let's just end the video. There it is, you guys, the hard sell. If you like this channel, hit like, hit subscribe, check us out on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Uh, I wanna thank all of our patrons and YouTube members who make this channel possible. Without you guys, we couldn't do half the things that we are able to do, and for that, we are forever grateful. Um, check out our website, theeducatedbarfly.com for recipes, articles, and our virtual bottle program. And I'll see you guys in another time.